Hey, Joe. Uh, most of you know that I don't do unboxings for unboxing's sake because I think that's incredibly stupid to use a whole video just to show somebody opening up a box and taking things out. That being said, I received my uh, newest Tenkara fishing rod in the mail today. It's their smallest one. It's called the White Cloud. It's a new offering by the Tenkara Rod Company. And I'm going to open it up and actually set it up. So um, it's not really an unboxing, but it's going to be like a first introduction. Then I'm going to take it out to one of the local ponds and give it a flick or two and see if I can't catch some uh, bluegill or something nice. So as I said, here it is. Here's the box, and here's their little neat thing and their little, little trout-looking logo on the side and the little hashtag, get out and fish. And inside the box, which I've already opened, by the way, so, you know, I don't need to do the whole knife thing. We have uh, the rod and rod tube, which is the smallest I've, I've seen. It's, it's less than two feet long in the tube. Um, like I said, I've already had it open. There's the, the label and everything over here. Very tight space on this desk. Uh, also inside the box, I'm gonna try not to block everything with my fat arm. There's a little pouch. And inside the pouch, okay box, you got outlived, outlived your usefulness, is uh, some of the extras and accoutrements that go with the rod. Uh, one of those being some 5X tippet usually comes with every package, every rod package, not every rod, but every package comes with a tippet. Um, three Tenkara flies, otherwise known as Kabari. Three of those. You'll notice that the hackle on these flies goes forward. It doesn't go back toward the eye. It goes, no, it goes forward toward the eye, not back toward the, uh, the, the, uh, the hook. Okay. Uh, a cute little line winder for storing your your furled line usually they're a little bigger than this but again this rod is very small compared to the other ones um, and then you have another little tin here which contains the actual furled line right in there These little tins come in handy i don't reuse them i usually do other things to get my line set up and keep it stored and then this time because the uh, the rod itself is too narrow to hold the standard line winder spool, which you would normally just slide down over the rod. So it's got these little hook keepers. Normally you would just use it to keep your hook uh, if you don't have that on, on a rod, but in this case what you do is you kind of wind it around the rod using these o-rings and you put two of them spaced and then you can use it to wind your line between the two keepers it's very handy and then you have this neat little what i would call a pencil case back in school remember pencil cases yeah. anyway and a little bag to keep your weed in after you're done with it. just kidding uh, And what we have here is the little cap on the end of the rod tube and inside the little piece of foam. What the Tenkara Rod Co. has done is they've taken their traditional rod sock that they usually pack with every rod and they've gone with neoprene instead of the fold over felt that they used to have. Um, this one here, they have a, a neoprene sock with a zipper not sure which I like better right now because I don't know how this is going to fit with stuff in there but you know like a rod once I put those keepers on but uh, you take it out of the sock and you have this little tiny see like the little butt end is it screws in and that's where you hold your section you got the little wooden piece in the front which you normally would pull off and there's your Lillian and your frontmost section. Um, I'm not going to extend it completely. Uh, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Yeah, I'll extend it completely. Wow, that is tiny. It, it doesn't seem tiny, but it is tiny and light. And there you go. That's the whole thing. Um, 
I don't know how long the whole thing is extended, but I think it's seven and a half, eight feet maybe. All right, I'm gonna put it back in because I don't need it to be fully extended in order to set it up. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Lillian right here, which is a little piece of tightly furled line that's attached to the front most end. This front tip section seems just a little bit stiffer than, than the other rods, than on the other rods, so I don't know why they did that. Um, so what you want to do is, on this, you want to just tie a simple overhand knot in the end of the Lillian, and I'll show you why in a minute. So you want to tie an overhand knot, pull it tight, don't leave a whole lot of tag in there, but you want to get that up in there. And that's actually going to act as a stopper knot. So a little overhand knot, very simple. Everybody's done them. Right there. Overhand knot. All right, and then you take your furled line. And the furled line has, okay, there you go. It's like a, it's almost like a braid, but it's not fishing braid. It's, it's braided. It's not a fishing grade. And I'm gonna unravel it so that you can see the other end, the end that doesn't go against the rod. Well, I didn't do that too well, did I? Yeah, I should have just unrolled it. All right, here it is. This end would be the end that you tie the, uh, see that little metal ring right there? That would be what you tie your tippet line directly to that. But before you do that, you're going to take the other end, this end here, which is all kinds of, um, it's got a little, a little knot and a pull-through knot on it and a piece of probably Dacron and a little loop on the end. And it's already set up. Sometimes they're set up, sometimes they're not. And what you want to do with that, that piece right there, it's, it's actually a, a loop of line. And you want to take your furled line and put it through the loop like a this a fat fingers so that now you've got the furled line going through the loop you know like this okay you can pull it tight and I think I think you can guess where that goes that goes on the Lillian below the overhand knot that you tied so what you want to do is you want to kind of snug that up and slide it up against the, the overhand knot. So you snug it by pulling it tight and then that should not come out over the overhand knot. Okay, I probably could have tied that overhand knot a little closer to the, the tag and made, made that tagging a little shorter. I'm not going to cut it though because I don't want the, the uh, Lillian to come all undone and stuff. All right, so then you have that. You have that all done, and that's attached to that. Um, the, the, the tension itself, uh, when you get a fish on, is enough to hold that snug against that overhand knot. I've only ever had one ever come out on me once, and that's because I got a tangle uh, elsewhere in the line, and it, and it for some reason, it, it loosened this up. And the line wound up in the water. So what I did was I used another Tankara line to snag that. All right, in this end, you have your uh, your little, I guess it's nickel. And this, I think I remember them describing it as being a ring made of nickel. And get that, you put it there. Before I put that together though, I'm gonna take these guys and put them on. Okay, so what you have is you have now that line keeper on there. You see how it wraps around the little wheel and on the other side it wraps around that little wheel. And then you could also take these and fold them in like that when you're storing without the line on it. But that's one. Okay, that's one. What you want to do is put the other one. I'm not going to put it up on that, on that white part. I don't know why. But again, you can collapse them so that they fit better in things and in the sock. Or you can leave them up. And then what you would do is you would take this line and drop it into the the rod, okay, and this is actually after you put the leader on, drop it in, into there, 
you, you take the plug, you insert the plug, and then you would wind it. I always wind it uh, clockwise when I'm storing and then counterclockwise when I'm taking it off. So around these two thingies, it's a technical term, thingy. And then you would keep winding, you know, your leader and whatnot on that. And then, then you would just store it back in the sock and you're ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna tie the leader on. I'm, I'm not gonna show you, it's not a knot tutorial, okay? Plenty of knot tutorials on YouTube. This is a 5, 5X tippet, which all their rods come with a 5X. Some of them you might want to use something a little heavier, 4X, 3X, depending on the size of the rod. You can use a clinch knot, you can use an improved clinch, you can use a Tenkara one knot. Uh, I'm gonna use a clinch knot for this without tools. Okay, anyway, there's my clinch knot. And you see the big, huge tag in. There was no cursing involved in the tying of that knot. I just wanted to make sure I was paying attention and not running my yak. So now I've got about five or so feet of tippet feet and now I'm winding this I don't have any oh I do have flies here now that I think about it I have the flies that I just got with the rod but I'm not going to tie them on because I'm probably going to just tie the, the bare hook the uh, number 12 or number 14 dry and there you have it that's that's it's ready to go Re almost ready to fish all you need to do is tie on a fly and then just extend it and, and it's ready to go Let's get some of that uh, happy waterfront footage. Get out my stuff. Forceps. Clip them to the belt. Clip them to the shirt. Yeah, put the glasses in the pocket, grab the fly bag. This is the bag of old fly rods right here. That's where I got all my fly gear and stuff. I, sometimes I bring one of the other rods out, a little bass rod, but since today we're focusing on the, the Tenkara nonsense, I'm gonna leave that there. Of course, today I'll see a huge bass watch. But anyway, there's the dock. You know, when they, uh, they see me with the chesty, people often say, hey, what you got on? I said, don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. It's the split. It's the split right there. Okay, so this is the new rod. Right here. Right here. And the new sock. I kind of do like this. It just feels a little snugger in the tube than the other one does, but I like the zipper action, <laughs> you know. Some would say it's a bit too snug, because without the rod in there, it doesn't, it doesn't go down into the, into the tube, it looks like. I don't like that, because I like to close the tube up when I'm not using it, so I don't lose the lid and stuff. I'm gonna tie on a fly. I'm, I'm not gonna go with the uh, the bear hook, like I said. I'm gonna actually try uh, a floating dry fly, you know. There's a lot of, oh my God, there's a huge, what did I say? There is a huge bass just chilling down there where the turtles are. And there's a lot of tilapia, and there's another bass. Figures. Of course, all the bass are coming around under the dock. Yeah, gator is under. Right. Yeah. Of course, all the bass are hanging down there. When I left the bass rod in the car, this gentleman here says uh, that there's the, the gators under the. He probably is. He's probably. Like a very big one. Nah, he's the little guy, the little, the little one. He comes around. They, they take turns. But look at the size of that bass. Oh my Lord. Please tell me you can see that. Well, I'm gonna go with a, 
Maybe a pom-pom fly. Oh, this guy, little red worm. Yeah, I'll do that. An actual tied fly. It's a little red wormy looking thing. It's got a little bit of weight to it. The hook is a little bigger than I usually use, but you know how it is. And we'll see if we can't hook into something. I know that gator's gonna be interested first thing I pull up, as soon as it starts thrashing in the water, that gator's going to come out. There's a gator under the dock. He's usually under there. Um, okay, so here we go. We're unraveling here. All right, let's see. Uh, no, I just got here. Just about to throw my first cast. Hello. Gator's under the uh, oh my goodness, yeah. Gator's under the dock. He'll, he'll come out as soon as I, as soon as I hook into my first bluegill, he'll come out because he'll hear it thrashing, oh, wow. or tilapia or whatever. Big gator, little gator. Uh, he's a little one. You fish here a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that was a, a four. Because there's uh that's even smaller than the smallest one that's usually wow. under there. Oh, that's a cute one. There we go. Little cone. Wow. That's a cute one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Let's see what's on this side. Uh, no, it's just the one. They would never they usually don't hang around more than one. Oh, there's a lot of bass. Some of them, yeah. There we go. Bass. Nah, I got to get him tired first because... This is a really light, really light line. No, don't go in the weeds. Don't tangle me in the weeds. Don't tangle me in the weeds. Oh, you dirt bag, you got me in the weeds. I think he came off. I think so. Nope, there he is. This is way heavy for this line. This is a realist system. It's a Japanese form of fly fishing called Tankara. And there we go. Ah, goodbye, weeds. You're a 10 pounder. He's under a pound, but he's I know, he's, he's a catch. Well, we, you know. used to, we used to go bass fishing when I was a kid. Yep. That was always okay, the goal. so that was always the goal to get a ten pounder. There you so go. Go in the gill. No, it's uh, I'm gonna let this one go away from the gator. Okay. Uh, if I can get the hook out now, I got some forceps. I'll have to use the forceps to get it out. No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I got, the only thing I'm worried about now is getting it, getting it untangled off of these weeds. Yeah, he hooked, he hooked real good right in the mouth. Like, right. Okay, forceps. Forceps. There we go. And where's the gator? I don't want to I don't want to drop it on his head. I want to
quickly. So the first, this that is actually the first catch on this rod. It just came in the mail today. It's a, yeah, it's a system, it's called Tenkara. And it's a fly rod that does not use a reel. It only uses the length of line. I mean, and you can catch bass on them. They're really made for trout. This is the lightest rod that this company makes. It's made for really tiny streams, for really tiny trout. Mm -hmm. And I just caught a, well, I'm gonna say a really tiny bass, because that's, this bass guy, that was kind of small. But there you go. Cool. I guess this worm did work. No, oh, thank you. Have a good day. That's a pretty good first fish for this rod, considering that it's a bass. And the gator did not get it, and it did not break off. So, Tenkara Rod Co., your white cloud is suited for small bass. Look at that. That was uh, kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I feel like I could go home. He was right over there where that turtle is. And I kind of, like, teased it a little bit and dropped it in front of his nose and then kind of, like, let it sink and then let it sink and then up and then let it sink and he went at it i was kind of shocked i'm not gonna lie hey that big bully tilapia is still over there that one that keeps bullying all the other fish look at that it just goes to show you i was about to give up on this one and, and change the change the stuff out and uh senor bass went right after it not a bad little bass. Tiny. Maybe I'll throw, maybe I will take this worm off and put a nymph on there uh, without a bead head. So it'll, it'll sink real slow. Um, seeing there's a lot, there are a lot of bluegill in here. Just trying to think where else I can cast it. Again, um, and I've, I've said this before in other videos, is, the difference between Tenkara casting and, and Western fly casting. In Western fly, you, you want to get your thumb up on the grip and like you're pushing in a thumbtack kind of thing. You know, you want to push the thumbtack. But with Tenkara, oops, oh crap, that went right next to that gator's face. With Tenkara, you're going to use your index finger and you're just going to use your wrist. You're just going to flick the wrist and get it out there. It's not a windy day today. That's also helping. Usually when I'm here, it's windy. Um, see, it's a question of whether you want to catch one or two larger fish and be out here for like forever and just go nuts to catch one or two larger fish or if you want to go lighter and catch a whole lot of little tiny fish, which is what I usually do. I like the feel of this new rod. It's so light. It's redonkulous. See if I can get that tilapia down there. Yeah, see, they're not interested in this. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna switch out flies. I'm gonna take this worm off of here. I think I got lucky with that bass uh, because, you know, bass look for worms. I think it was a small one looking for a small worm. So again, that's the fly right there. The little guy right there. Look at that little belly in the middle, little bright belly. I have all kinds of flies in here, both Tenkara and not Tenkara. I've got some nymphs. I've got some with bead heads that sink a little faster. I don't want those because this is kind of still water. And these fish, they love to watch stuff sink nice and slow before they hit it. Those maggots that I have, are real good like that. And I even have some pom-pom flies, just basically a pom-pom stuck on a fly hook. And those uh, pretty much just emulate bread. Get that bread. Gotta get that bread. So here's some nymphs that look like little bees or whatever.
Hmm. I'm gonna try a little white. No, I'm not gonna do that. You know, something's telling me to put on a plain hook and just, and then just hook those fake maggots. I also have uh, fake worms, like fake earthworm, making little tiny worms. Let's see what I got here. And I got these little pom poms. Those are neat. I throw one of those on a number 14 hook. All right. That would be cash money. I'm gonna throw a 14 dry on there. And then maybe use those little worms. Another hook. This one's gonna be a number 12 dry. And it's in my finger. Okay. Oop. Didn't do something right. What did I do not do right? Ah, uh, there we go. They say go five, I like to go six. Six turns. Slide that down. Pull out the ends. Wet. Slide, tighten, and snip. Do you know what happens way too often? When I'm tying a fly on and I go to snip the tag end and the line is so fine that you can't see you're actually also snipping the standing end. And that sucks because you're basically just cutting off the fly that you just tied on. It sucks to be you. All right, I'm going to the maggots. Tired of fishing. I want to start catching. And here they are, the naturals. Gulp, maggots, in natural maggot color. Like they came right off the garbage heap. All right, let's go. Let's do this thing. Let's do the thing. Not only do the blue, the bluegill like these things, but the tilapia, like the Mexican mojara, there's a couple of those in here, around it. So annoying. Oh. And of course, they're all on this side. There's not much sitting on the other side. Get your nose away from my maggot. I feel like the, uh, the ring on the end of the furled line on this rod, or on the line that came with this rod, is bigger than the usual. Because it's, it's very visible. I can like see it where normally you have to kind of look for it. Ah, tilapia going after my little maggot. He nosed it and swam backwards. How much do I hate you right now? Let's see if there's anything on the other on the other side. Flick. 
Now I'm casting into the wind, so that's going to be a problem. Oh, there's a bass over there. There's a bluegill that was carrying this maggot forever. And then another one stole it from him and got hooked. How funny is that? Fish on. Fish. Fish. He's already out of the water. Didn't have a chance to go into the weeds. Oh. That gator's all the way over there. So he's not getting a free meal today. Look. I think maybe one more, because I'm a stubborn ass. All right, this will be the one where I lose my hook, watch. Win. Oh, maybe, maybe. Turtle, if you don't beat it, I will cut you. I will fight you, turtle. Don't make me cut a turtle. Well, I am going to get at least one more bluegill before I go. I mean, unless I lose a hook. <laughs> then I'm done. But I would say first day out with the white cloud. Is this success? Oh, there we go, in a crotch. Rescued it. There's a bluegill trying to run off with it. He grabbed the maggot and he ran off with it and a tilapia followed him over. Come on, bluegill. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Turtle, if you don't get off my line, motherless hooey. Eh? He's just chilling there now, waiting for me to throw another one down. Yo, you, you do not get this. This is not yours. I will put this line right across your face. Hey, that's what I'll do. I'll cast it over here to draw the turtles.
good. They're too busy playing that to care about what I got on my line. Uno más. In the crotch. Nope, I just lost my maggot. Didn't lose the hook. That's weird how they, how they get caught in the crotch and sometimes I lose the hook. Oh, that's weird. I still have my hook. But the knot came undone, but it held on to the hook. I'll take that as a sign. Time to go so home. I won't be putting the, a new fly on, because I'm gonna leave this, uh, and I'll tie a fly on, depending on what the next place I go to with this is. The white cloud is a success. And I can't believe that on the lightest Tenkara Rodco Rod, I was actually able to catch a bias. That's a nice little rod, let me tell you. Tenkara Rod Company. So the Tenkara Rodco White Cloud gets a yay! Still can't believe I caught a bass on that thing. Hmm. One that's never ceased.